Welcome to Brake Check. I'm Craig. And I'm Brian. And today we're driving the other horse. Sport. The other horse sport. Yeah. Bronco Sport. So what do you think about this exterior? Uh, catch is gray, baby. I like this catch is gray. Yeah, a lot more than I thought it would. I, this is one of those colors I think online doesn't look great in pictures, but right. in person, looks really neat. Look, we've we've talked about off camera, we've talked a lot about how this might be the more feminine color of the color palettes. Right. Maybe it still is. Maybe. But it doesn't bother me at all. No, I, I it, like it. I especially like it too with the white Bronco letters. Yeah, it contrasts like it really well. Cool. It looks really cool. Um, so what we're really looking at is largely an escape at the hard points. It's an escape, basically. With a shorter wheelbase. Right. More ground clearance. Yes. And we're driving the Badlands today, which means it has an additional inch of ground clearance. Yep. Which has had no problem with approach or departure angles today. Not today. Um, so back to exterior. What's also, your... well, the other difference between the Escape is styling. Oh, completely. It looks. If you open the like hood, you notice something here. What'd you notice? Uh, there's a big gap between the actual <laughs> chassis rail and the fender, uh, there, like a whole hand's width. That's called the not Escape. It's called the not Escape. <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. Um, but it doesn't affect its functionality. No. Um, Styling-wise, though, it looks like a baby Range Rover. We keep hearing that a lot. Yeah. And I can see that. I can see that. More importantly, it looks like a Bronco. It looks a lot like a Bronco. We get. People text us, call us all the time, hey, I saw one of the new Broncos. All the time. And what are they usually seeing? A Bronco Sport. Exactly. And we know that, um, but we're also curious, if they saw a real Bronco, I want to know about it. <laughs> right, yeah, if you and do we, see one, let tell us. And when we get the texted picture to us, it's just a white, or actually we've seen this one driving around a lot. <laughs> we see this one a lot. This yeah. is from Mike Brown Ford in Granbury, Texas. Yep. Uh, Charles Brockman took us up on this one, and again, if you're looking for one, they have them. They're not in high volume, but as they get them, they, they have them coming in steadily. So if you're looking for one, give them a shout. What's your favorite part about the exterior? Favorite part? I love the roof that steps up. It you reminds like the, me of yeah. an LR3, LR4. Yeah, very Discovery. Right, Land and it Rover gives you a functional headroom in the, in the second row. It's a, yep. a four-man function. What about that sticker on the side of the door? I mean, badge. It's not a sticker, it's oh, a badge. Oh, badge, it's a badge. Yeah. I feel like it's an afterthought. Um, I think it looks really cool, and then you come touch and you go, oh, that probably came with like a Happy Meal. Or what about the sure. vent on the side of the door? Oh, the faux vent? Yeah. It doesn't bother me. It's actually similar to the one on the F-150. Tell you what I like. It's a little silly. I like how squared off it is. Totally. I know it's, no, I it's dumb and it makes it get, probably the gas, hurts its gas mileage. Right. But I like the big bulge on the hood, which is a little silly. The first thing you see when you drive this is, what but, is that? But when you're driving, you see all of this. It's cool. <laughs> I like that. Um, my greatest thing on the looks of it is this is a, we're not hiding anything, it is a crossover. Yep. But it looks nothing like what it's based on. It looks I, nothing like the Ford Escape. You know I struggle with crossovers. Most of y'all know I struggle yeah, with crossovers. We both do. This is a crossover. This is a crossover. But I love that this crossover can actually do stuff. Yeah. Legitimately, not like yep. kind of. It can't. I mean, these, these tires and wheels and the, all everything we get underneath, we'll Out talk about box. in a minute. The, Pretty impressive. Yeah. So let's jump into the interior. Let's do it. Hey, Brian, interior. Here we are. What do you think? Man, what a nice place to sit for this classic car. It's pretty nice. It's cubby holes. Cubby holes, it is. So. You keep, when we've been driving this around, you keep mentioning the Seltos. We keep thinking about the Seltos. Yes, yes, because we like the Seltos. Because that's one of the crossovers we really like. Yeah, we actually consider owning that. Maybe we shouldn't compare it to the Bronco Sport. A lot of people compare the Cherokee Trailhawk more. Which is a better fit. Which is probably a better fit. Yeah. But we've recently been to the Seltos, so we think of that. Yeah. Can, Seltos interior nice. Yes, it but is. But you keep coming about how nice this interior is. What, it, what do you like so much about it? Everything you touch and feel feels premium, mm -hmm. which you don't expect from a small crossover. Right. Everything color palette looks nice. You've got this copper finish on the Badlands, and you've got the horse integrated flush with the It's a Bronco, wheel. not a Mustang, though. Not the, exactly. I like the gauges a lot. You still have analog, tack, and speedo, mm -hmm. and informative, good screen in the middle with yeah, good actually, resolution. Ford actually has done a good job with yeah, the stuff in the middle on this definitely. one. We, and we're not the biggest fans of that, but But this is the balance between the two I, that I'm happy with. I, I, I like agreed. this way better than a full digital cluster, so I like it a yeah. lot. Um, it has the Digi-Stick shifter, mm -hmm. which I'm sorry, uh, every other car of you on the planet, I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me it, at all. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. You have the GOAT modes. GOAT mode. What does GOAT mean? Greatest of all time. I mean, goes over any terrain. Yes. Yes, that's what that means. Um, Four-wheel drive lock, which is the center diff lock, and rear diff lock, which we just tested, and in our brief testing is accurate. Yes. It is one-to-one -one ratio on every wheel. So time. center and rear locking in a crossover, pretty Big deal. cool. So. More on that in dynamics, yeah. though. Um, um, now, a lot of that's the Badlands package. Correct. So this this tan you get is really yeah. nice. You get the little suede a little bit in the back. Exactly. Nice Bronco. A little embroidery. Embroidery. Good sunroof. Mm -hmm. I love the stadium seating in the back. Yeah. So if you have kids that get car sick, which my wife and I do, we have one that's very car sick, um, this would be great for them. The visibility yeah. is good for the rider in the rear. And you mentioned the cubby holes earlier, I think, but there's there's a bunch of cubby holes in the right spots right. where you need it. But usable cubby holes. Ergonomics in typical Ford fashion are yeah. pretty good. It's not the biggest 
interior and you know they didn't do the honda magic of making it feel bigger right. it doesn't really feel big in here no but it's they did the cubby hole magic though. but all the space in here is useful yeah it's all in the right place so. it's not just for design to look weird it just it just works well the trade-off like you said is the seating in the rear right now as a front occupant i'm a bigger guy i'm six yeah. four i don't feel tight at all in here right totally fine if you have a passenger in the rear, that's going to be a trade-off. It is smaller in inside than it actually looks on the outside. Um, but, like we said, it's based on an Escape, which is not a big car. They're right. And they gave up a little bit of rear leg room for a shorter wheelbase, which helps off-road. If you're, if two adults are riding in this thing, perfectly no, no problem. Plenty of room up here. Well, and I can get in the back comfortably for around town, go to lunch, that kind of deal. That's fine. So, two adults or small children, you're fine. It's great. It, yeah. yeah. So. Um, some neat things in the back. You've got the campsite lights on the tailgate. That is really neat. You have a rear window that opens up. Separately from the hatch. Separately from the hatch. Yes. You have a button-down um, mat that can go on the backs of the seats that are folded down. The that way you row. can put your uh, mountain bikes back there. Mountain bikes. Two mountain bikes, 27 five-inch wheel, can fit vertically in here, like the Xterra's used to Without do. taking the tire off. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's part big. of the reason yeah. the roof is stadium style. Right. Um, and you also have full-size spare, which is helpful. If you're going off-road, you, you don't want to go out with a donut. That's not going to work. Full-size spare. And That's not underneath, so you don't have to get dirty. Right, you just lift it and it's there. Right. And um, there's a cubby hole for your dirty, muddy shoes. There is, under one seat. Under one seat, seats. but not both. That's pretty cool, though. One more thing in the, inter or in the interior. Yep. Most importantly, uh oh. and we talked about this when we first did the walk around on this months ago. Yep. This is the world's most expensive bottle opener. Oh, yes. It there's a bottle opener in the back. Exactly. The back. I mean, the because when you're well, overlanding, Brian, you have to drink a beer. You have, you have a, a, a bubbly an IP, beverage. An IPA. IPA. An IPA. An IPA. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the theme to me that this thing em, embodies is let's get outside. And it does. The dirt, and that, that's what you see on the outside, and that's what you see on the inside as well. And in, in case you may forget that that's what you're supposed to do in this, right. when you start the vehicle... Rocks come up <laughs> right. and form a Bronco, a yes. bucking Bronco formed out of rocks, Brian. Comes to life, virtually. And in case that's not enough, in the center, yeah. it's got a nice picture of a mountainscape with a night sky. Look, I mean, look, you're supposed to go outside in this thing. I'm, I'm trying to remind you. I'm with you. I want to make fun of the overlandy, let's get our Instagram camp pictures going on. <laughs> But you just take I, a picture of your instrument. Panel. I know, I know. You don't have to take you can live. You can live in Manhattan and go off roading with this thing. But what I'm getting at is, I buy into it. We make fun of this it, all the time. Yeah, good but, point. But I keep buying these things. I like it. <laughs> right. And we keep going. How much are these things? Where are yeah. they going for? Yeah. That says a lot already. That's a good so, point. That's a good point. With that out of the way, let's go drive it. Let's go drive it. Four wheel drive lock. Center lock. Rear, rear lock. lock. You know what it's time it is. Dynamics. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, okay. Rip on dirt. Sounds like a V8 for some reason. Is it? Wow. And 60 on dirt. Before the cattle guard. Whoa! Okay. Hey, not bad. So, Craig, this review is taking place on dirt. Yep. Because we're in the Badlands edition of the Broncos. Darn Broncos, right we are. Which is the only way really to test this. Absolutely. So, um, let's get into it. Powertrain first. Mm hmm. This is basically a Focus RS with an 8 speed automatic shoved between the engine and rear diff. And you mean you say that because the driveline is basically. In terms of driveline, yeah. yes. Thank you for clarifying that. 2 liter turbo, mm -hmm. 245 horse, 275 torque. Pretty good. Active torque vector in the rear end mm -hmm. with an actual rear diff lock. Yes. Which is pretty impressive for the size. The only other vehicle I know of in this category has that is the Cherokee Trailhawk. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yep. Yeah, because um, all the other crossover Outbacky Subarus, they don't have actual lockers back there. Right. Because it's front wheel drive biased. Exactly. Which, which is this, what a crossover is. Which this is as well, but when yeah, you it put is. it into the corrective of the 1200 modes, <laughs> it will go into permanent full. It does drive. feel like there's 1200 options in right. the modes with traction control on, off, locker, center, rear. And this is a, a gripe of ours between all the Fords right now. The, the FX4 150 did the same thing to us which is kind of annoying. Yeah. I'm also perplexed why when I put it in sport mode, it sounds like a <laughs> vacuum cleaner V8. Yeah. So yeah. when I put it into normal mode, I'm gonna floor it again. Ready? Now, v now it just sounds like vacuum cleaner. And the V8's gone. And the V8 went away. <laughs> so, but much like the F-150, it's tricking me pretty well. They've made their their audio augmentation yeah. better than it used Most to Most people will not notice that at all. Right, it's not annoying. The sound no. is not annoying, it's totally fake. Right. But it's not annoying, at least. All right, so dip review. Dynamics, intended purpose. Yes. To give me the dip. Here's the dip. Um, As we drive through the dip. First of all, here's the dip. Let's go through it. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Whoa. Okay. Um, I want to talk about approach angles first. 
Yeah, that was a good one. Okay, so it's done really well. Uh-huh. We just did some angle testing a second ago and, yeah. and making sure the rear diff actually worked. And never did it scrape. No. Mm-mm. Never did it have a wheel spinning. Even with the diff off, it was actively keeping that wheel in the air from just going crazy. Which, again, crossovers in this segment, that's hard to do. They just don't have that. Right. Um, so, dynamics of intended purpose, which let's talk about the intended purpose real quick. Yeah, what is the intended purpose of a crossover, small crossover? This one is not your urban runabout. It is Got not it. intended to be that. Although it can. It can, but the Escape is intended to be that. Right. This is intended to do some light off-roading, mm-hmm. camping for two, mountain mm-hmm. biking trip for mm-hmm. two, rooftop tent, which you can accessorize. There's a hundred different accessories from the factory. Yep. That you can put on this thing. Yeah, Ford wants you to take this outside. Yes. That Ford wants you. They are jumping on the adventuring bandwagon. Exactly. And they want you to go outdoors Get with the out. thing. Right, and they prove that in their startup with the rocks and the Bronco we talked about. Climb out of the earth, and then yeah. even if you get the Badlands package, which is like a Trailhawk, we'll say right. in a Jeep, right. you actually Ford wants you to take it to a place they have and and test it and drive it and learn how to take yes. this thing off road. They want to train you off road. They want to teach you how to drive this thing off road. Kind of like the the ST program when the Focus and Fiesta was running. Yeah, yeah, it's, very it's, similar. It's encouraging that Ford is it's like a a, a wholesome approach to this mentality of getting outside. Exactly. Um, the difference to me is, unlike an actual like Wrangler, mm-hmm. it has four-wheel independent suspension. Yeah, it's very comfortable. It, it rides it's, right on the highway, and it's quiet, especially for a pretty short wheelbase. It's just it's impressive. Yeah. So that makes some intended purpose: getting outside but still driving it daily. That's what mm-hmm. I'm just that's what I'm defining this thing as. Mm-hmm. This will go anywhere I want to go mm-hmm. in our region. Yeah. Oh, especially full, where full we're stop. at here in Texas. Yeah. Full stop. It's going everywhere. Uh, it's going to get it all done. Yeah. So. Man, I'm, I'm I'm really impressed with that so yeah, far. Yeah, that part is impressive. Um, I, I'll mention something about dynamics. This is not so much dynamics, but there's a little bit of a fuel economy penalty. I'm glad I'll, you brought that up. Yeah. Most vehicles in this class get a little bit better they on do. average. They do, but I'm going to counter argue that mm-hmm. most vehicles in this class are nowhere near as capable as this. Point. And that's the trade-off. So that you've got to decide if it's worth it or not. Right. So um, you know, th- that's something to consider. Because the Escape is a better fit if mileage is more important to you. Speak. All right. If you've made it this far along, we would like to remind you that we have a podcast. We do have a podcast. It is available on iTunes, whatever iTunes, you Android, Spotify, on. Google Podcasts, on all of them. Wherever you get your podcast, yeah. check it out. Link in the description below. Thanks. Thanks. It's time for the picture score. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, wait, wait, wait. You do the countdown. Oh, three, two, one. Six. Seven. Six? Yeah. Huh, not bad. Okay. You're well, getting better. I'm impressed. Well. Okay. Well, here's, here's where I get to seven. I'll, I'll go first. It gets a seven because this thing, they listen to all the Overlander, adventure I want to get outdoorsy things that hipsters like. Yep. But also knowing that hipsters really most of the time are driving around the city, let's be honest. Mm, yeah. That's what this car is. So wait, you're saying this is bespoke for hipsters? I think they were, it's kind of a lot like the Subarus. Okay. They took a okay. lot of pay, plays glad, out of the Subaru page book. I'm uh, glad playbook. you brought that up. Because I think the main competitor to this, beyond the Cherokee Trailhawk, mm-hmm. is the Crosstrek or Forester. I think that'll be crossed up more than the Cherokee. I agree. Can I make a comment about off-road ability? Okay. This will mop the floor with a Crosstrek. Absolutely, because number one, it doesn't have a CVT. That's what, that, and that's it. That's <laughs> yeah. kind of where it yeah. begins. I've had the Crosstrek off-road, <clears throat> or off-road. It had problems putting power down. Mm-hmm. The wheel got in the air, you weren't going anywhere. Right. So you call it... Yeah, symmetric all drive wherever you want. Uh, it's where, slipping where somewhere. It's slipping. Right. This is locking. This is locking. Yeah. So kudos there. Yeah. Um, how'd you get your seven though? Uh, so I got my seven because I, I would have given it a little bit higher because it's checking everything. It's got the bottle opener for your IPAs yeah. in oh, the back, yeah. mountain biking setups, all oh, your right. accessory rooftop tents, brown and black interior. The, they thought of Cat, everything for hipsters. Cactus gray is the color. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. I mean, you're getting all that. Right. It lost some points for the fuel mileage thing. That's why. Okay. That's I guess lost fair. Points. Otherwise, I, it would have got maybe an eight. Really? Yeah. Wow. So. Okay. I pretty much came to the same uh, understanding as you did. Uh, I, I gave it a little less credit because there's nothing hybrid about it, and there's nothing eco. Well, there's eco mode, but there's nothing like legitimately economic about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So that's true. All right. Who's this car for, bro? We've kind of hit on a minute ago. We have. I feel like this is for the younger millennial couple. Oh, definitely millennial. Definitely. <laughs> um, not that we have anything to do with that. Um, <laughs> we're millennials. But they live in the city. Mm-hmm. They spend most of their time in the city. Yeah. But they want to get outdoors. Yes. And they want that Instagram campsite picture. Mm-hmm. And they probably really enjoy the outdoors. Maybe they mountain bike. Maybe they go kayaking. Whatever outdoors you think you want to do, that's what this is for. But you actually have to live in the city. 
there's again, there's no hardcore off-roader trade-off with this thing. That's who it's for. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the hardcore off-roader trade-off thing because uh, you're absolutely right about that. The biggest thing is that there is not most people like the idea of a hardcore off-roader, right? But they don't need it. Correct. Most people that this is going to do what most people want to do. Go, they want the idea of going off-roading, right? But practically, they don't need it. This is the a good blend of both. So look, most of them in the city getting groceries, getting kids. This does it great, and you're comfortable. The, I want to go out outdoors a little bit and get off roading. This will do that. Do that too. Ninety percent as good as the hardcore. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, and let's be honest, most people don't need anything more than what this will do. Right. So with that, um, before I die, we go off the cliff here. Ah. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned. We got Freak. more puddles coming. Oh, Freak a little sideways. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, there we hey, go. there we go. Again, basically it's a Focus RS. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, bye.